welcome to this audit of survival hacks. Um, so I selected this site because it's your uh, typical um, Amazon affiliate site that pretty much looks exactly the same as uh, the, the typical done for you uh, affiliate sites that you can buy. So this means that it probably has um, has the has the typical issues that uh, these sites have, um, which means that you guys can probably um, learn a thing or two. Okay, so um, I didn't prepare anything for this audit, meaning I'll do everything on the fly and just freestyle so that you can follow my, my thought process and everything and can see how I uh, look at sites, uh, which issues I focus on and so on. Um, I, I won't focus on, on basic issues like, I don't know, missing meta descriptions or title texts that are too long or too short. Um, there are enough tools that uh, can, can look at these issues and yeah, basically anyone can figure these out. Um, okay, so let's start off with some basic UX and CRO and then move on to the actual SEO stuff uh, in a bit. All right, so the homepage doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's a portal style homepage that links to the uh, most important uh, product roundups. That's perfectly fine. Um, what isn't perfect is um, that these featured images aren't in a square format. So Google started to show, um, show these featured images in its mobile SERPs. Um, and if they aren't square, they are going to be cut off, which means the logo is probably going to be cut off and uh, the, the text on the image as well. So um, it just makes sense to, to use a square format so that um, the, the mobile SERPs look as good as they possibly can, which is likely to increase your click-through rate. Um, and yeah, it just looks better. Okay. Um, then some more or less obvious issues. There are some contrast issues. Same with, with these links. You just can't, can't read the menu item when you hover over it. Okay, so um, another thing I noticed is that uh, every item on the homepage as well as the navigation uses... Um, oops, no, that is wrong actually. Maybe it's just these then. Um, if you click on them, they, they open in a new tab. You should use this for external links, yes, but I wouldn't actually use this for internal links. Maybe it was the sidebar. Nope. That's all fine as well. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's something I would probably change. It's just a, a small UX thing and nothing that would impact your SEO or anything. Um, Okay, what else? Let's see which which alt text you use here. Okay, this looks fine. So basically, the uh, alt text of these images will uh, will be the same as if you if you would use um, actual hyperlinks. So uh, yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Um, all right, now let's look at an actual page. Let's just pick this one. Okay, so CRO, let's see. Okay, there's the first issue. So this, this table is uh, almost fine, but uh, the main issue is that you don't use um, any any button for for these CTAs, I would definitely do this. So um, yeah, just just add a nice check price button there. Check best price isn't ideal for Amazon. I think it could be 
a violation of their uh, terms. Mm. One thing you could do is just uh, use um, AAWP, which makes it quite easy to, to create these um, Amazon comparison tables. Um, and, and of course it includes buttons already, so that's probably easier than, than having to deal with this. Um, you can also automatically uh, show the, the product ratings which usually also helps to, to increase the click rates on your affiliate links. Okay, so there's the first product re you review. Your heading links to Amazon, that's fine, the image as well. I would definitely add a button below this image, a, a check price button of course. This just makes it easier to, to I don't know, click on this right away. Um, there's the video, that's fine. Okay, there's your check price button. So this kind of blends into your design and again, the, the contrast isn't great. I would probably use red CTAs. Let's see if we can, we can quickly change this one. Let's use, oops. oops. Oh, <laughs> that's the right color, okay. Um, now this, this is still gray instead of white. Um, let's just increase the font size a little bit. Um, oops. Huh. Okay, so that looks better. Mm, you could also add a some kind of, of arrow or something. Yeah, something like this probably just um, to make this this button look a little better and uh, increase the probability of people clicking on it. And again, just uh, put this button under your your product image above as well. Maybe increase the spacing between this uh, subheading and the button, just so that it stands out a little more. And uh, yeah, especially on mobile, people could maybe click on this heading instead. Mm. Okay. I would probably also um, add your top product, so whatever product uh, you think uh, won this uh, best survival food kit uh, roundup uh, just uh, just place another CTA at the bottom here so people who, who just uh, scrolled uh, to the conclusion or anything um, can actually see which uh, which is the best product actually oh that's vegetarian yeah anyway just just mention uh, which uh, product is the best one in your conclusion and add another CTA below or just uh, bold the um, the product name and and use a hyperlink if it works as well but a CTA at the bottom should should be better okay so yeah if you follow these um, these quite basic uh, uh, things you should already see a good boost in click-through rate, especially with uh, the, the buttons in your table. Okay, so that's it for CRO. Let's, uh, let's jump into the actually interesting SEO stuff now. Um, okay, so um, I already ran this uh, site through uh, href site audit. Um, slow page, yeah, I think your site performance is uh, pretty bad. 
So yeah, that's that's quite obvious as well. Just uh, run your site through uh, through this tool or through Lighthouse. It's basically, oops, the same thing. Let's have a look at one of your money pages. Um, and yeah, of course, uh, just improve performance as much as you can. Uh, missing all text. Uh, again, that's that's just a common issue that you can figure out on your own. You could use uh, rank math, which has a feature to automatically um, insert um, missing all text uh, based on your heading or um, I don't know anything. So <laughs> just that they they aren't empty anymore. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't care about this too much. Um, this is a good opportunity to, to squeeze in some long tails or spelling errors or, or anything that you can't actually put on the on the page itself. Um, but other than that, it's it's not a major issue. A title too long, yeah, same thing. Page has links to redirect. I would definitely fix these because uh, this would just um, impact your crawl budget in a negative way, of course. Uh, broken images, of course, fix these uh, pages. Broken image, same thing. Page has links to broken page. Definitely fix these. You don't want Google to, to run in, into any um, for four links. These are both external ones. In this case, I think um, hrefs is just blocked. Um, and in this case, Maybe it doesn't actually exist. I can see you, you set these to no follow, so it doesn't matter too much. But since Google now follows no follow links as well, I would still fix these. But again, that's that's just a rather small issue. I wouldn't worry about too much. Um, yeah, links to redirects. That's just your Amazon links. Uh, there's something. External that redirects. I would update this uh, this link, and it seems to be do follow as well. Um. Anyway, um. What's interesting in there? Mm, let's look at your page depth. I think that was Structure Explorer here. Yeah. Uh, let's look at depth. Okay, so um. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, pages on level one, which is fine. But there are also some on level two and three. Um, that's basically just an issue with your internal linking, which we'll check in a few minutes. Let's just uh, see if we can find any yeah, common issues that you should fix anyway, but that I won't talk about too much. So yeah, these are the, the actual page URLs that have been redirected and uh, still have uh, links pointing to them, except this one, which is just in, in Google's index. Um, so yeah, I would uh, definitely update uh, the, yeah, <laughs> the internal links that uh, are pointing to these. Because again, this just uh, wastes your crawl budget. Um, all right, so let's move on to your home page and uh, i'll start off with your navigation and and all these uh, kind of boilerplate or global issues so to speak um let's have a look at your footer first okay so you link to your home page and your contact us page which you already linked to from your main navigation and your logo. So these are duplicate links to, to boilerplate content. I would get rid of these. And image credits could probably be moved to, I don't know, the about page or maybe even your privacy policy. Uh, anyway, so the idea is just to, um, to get rid of, of links that um, uh, not just links, but also pages 
that you don't want to actually rank. So privacy policy and contact us about us and all that are uh, common boilerplate pages. So it's a good idea to have them. Um, but image credits probably isn't too common. This home link is just um, unnecessary. And the same thing with this link. I think you also had this in your sidebar. Yeah, I will probably just remove this link and uh, yeah, read our privacy policy should be enough. I'll just remove this, this whole sentence. Um, other than that, I don't spot any duplicate links. Um, your homepage meta title. Um, I would change this to something like the survival hex and then I don't know a dash or a colon or anything and then uh, try to kind of mention your uh, your main keywords so to speak or your main keyword modifiers uh, that you use on on all of these pages which would be um, oops. Oh, geez. <laughs> which would be the survival guides and reviews, probably something like this. So this could slightly increase um, the overall relevance of your your site uh, in relation to these uh, these keywords: survival guides, reviews, and best. Um, and the length is okay as well. So yeah, it would probably use this as homepage title. Uh, definitely remove this uh, home prefix. Okay, so let's have a look at your performance report. Okay, this actually looks quite bad. Let's see what the actual report has to say. Yeah, your server response time is incredibly high. So I would probably use a different hosting provider. This one seems to suck. Um. Some of your scripts have, um, oh no, that's an external one. Okay, so um, this one uh, still has a query string attached to it, which makes it impossible to, um, to cache this. And you generally want uh, one static scripts and images cached. Everything else are external scripts. Maybe you can just uh, reduce your external scripts in general, like, I don't know, add to any, you could probably remove this. Um, you use Google Tag Manager, which is great. You could use this to actually um, offload all these uh, external scripts uh, to Google Tag Manager and use a trigger, a, a timer trigger. So use timer as trigger and set this to I don't know, three seconds on all pages that match your domain name. And uh, then load these uh, external scripts um, with a three second delay using Google Tag Manager. Um, this should improve your performance quite a bit. The downside is that they, uh, they don't uh, load immediately, but in general, you don't really need them to. Um, you could also use a, a shorter delay, like just uh, one or two seconds. Um, what else? Yeah, quite a few DOM elements. That's a drawback of Elementor. Mm, this looks okay. Some contrast issues. So, some browser errors. I would look into these and see if you can fix them. Yeah, no matter description, that's not an issue actually. 
Okay, so yeah, just just try to improve your performance because uh, this definitely looks bad. Um. Okay. <laughs> Where was I? Um. All right. I think we were just looking at internal links and your navigation. All right. Sorry for jumping topics. Um. Mm. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at your categories. Mm, you got reviews. You got guides and blog. All right. So this uh, this blog page just looks like it lists all your posts. Um, this doesn't make too much sense. I would probably just uh, remove this whole category. So what's going to happen is that you just waste crawl budget and um, and bloat your Google index if this isn't no indexed. Okay, it isn't no index. So um, yeah, just just get rid of it because um, it doesn't provide any additional relevance block is, is just a generic term that um, doesn't help you structure your content and kind of increase its relevance. Mm. Same thing actually with uh, guides and reviews. Um, you generally want to, to structure your content um, by topic kind of like you did with uh, these categories um, but at the same time uh, it makes sense to to put each article in just um, just one category so as i can see here you put this one in, in guides and in survival survival is in the category that that would make too much sense because your your whole website is already about survival stuff and yeah guides pretty much anything is a guide right so even a review could be considered a guide so again this this category doesn't provide any additional context or relevance um bug out back that's uh, that's the only category this post should be in um, let's see how many posts you got in there. Yeah, this looks okay. It's just three or four, one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, but uh, still that's, that's all right. So, um, I would completely restructure your uh, main navigation and use drop downs. So let's see if I can come up with something useful. Mm. Okay, <laughs> I gotta think about this and look at more of your articles. Okay, so a lot of these things could be considered survival gear. So I would probably um, use use this as the uh, main menu item and uh, actually just just uh, link to a uh, hash. So so not actually create um, a category for this, but um, just a menu item. And uh, then below that, um, you would link your categories. So in this case, um, oh, open too many tabs. Get home back. Yes. No, get out back. <laughs> Bug out back. All oh, right. <laughs> And you could use uh, bug out bags. This would link to your uh, category page. Speaking of, this uh, slug doesn't look too great. I would definitely re remove this category prefix because again, it doesn't provide any additional relevance or anything and just 
just makes your URL longer. Again, survival also doesn't make sense. Your whole site is about survival. So um, the URL I would use for this category would be just, just this. Um, and then I would also uh, no index category pages because I'm pretty sure you got a, um, yeah, a roundup post for best bug out bag. And um, it happens quite often that you would actually start to rank for, for a bug out bag with, without this uh, best modifier. Um, which means this would likely cannibalize with uh, your bug out, uh, out bag. <laughs> Uh, category page and yeah the the best way to fix this is to just uh, no index the category page and um, keep your fingers crossed that uh, this uh, review page is going to rank for bug out bags um, all right now yeah let's let's actually stick with this Just make this a little more clear. And then um, another level below uh, bug out bags, I would I would put this uh, this page so directly link uh, link to this uh, page below your um, bug out bags category page, and this uh, page should also link to to all your individual reviews. So um, if you reviewed any specific uh, bug out bags, I don't think you have. Um, uh, then just uh, just link to to all of them from there and also back from the individual reviews to this uh, best bug out bags um, roundup so this this page would kind of act like a, a subcategory would probably be the best term yeah and then the, the same thing for for any other survival gear this would probably be your main uh, category. Mm. Paracords. And again, in case you, you got a rounder page for this one, which I'm sure you have. Yes, you have one. <laughs> um, Oops, nope, that's just some other kind of content. Um, so yeah, I would uh, probably add a, uh, another best uh, paracord or paracords roundup post. So you can, can also link this, uh, this below the, the category. Yeah, well, and so on. So um, other than survival gear, let's see. If there's anything else, oh, and by the way, for um, info content, let's see what you got there. Probably this one. Um, you should, uh, of course, put this in your um, food category in this case, uh, instead of using a, a block category or no category at all, like I think you did here. I think this is in your in your block category actually. Um, so um, yeah, so this is how you should structure your menu and uh, just probably you know, categorize your your content and get rid of everything that's that's just um, irrelevant, like guides, reviews. Um, what else? 
x. I don't know. Survival x is just got uh, one one round up in there. Um, yeah, it doesn't make too much sense to, sense to create a, a category for a single page. So yeah, maybe add a couple of uh, individual reviews of survival access and um, interlink them with your uh, your roundup post and put them all in the, the same category, in the survival X category, which would be set to no index uh, and linked under survival gear with a, a child item that links to your to your best roundup. Um, all right, now let's let's look at your internal linking. Um, so linking to your categories from your sidebar, yes, it's generally fine, but also not necessary if you if you link to them from your main navigation, like I suggested. So I would probably remove this uh, sidebar item. Same for latest posts and most viewed posts. Uh, so in this case, your whole site is about uh, survival gear, uh, basically. So this isn't that much of an issue, but uh, if you create more like specific uh, subcategories, which you definitely should, it makes sense to to make sure that um, that you mostly or only um, interlink items that are with within the same subcategories. So, what happens with these sidebar links is uh, that you I don't know um, link these uh, food roundups to uh, with with some uh, articles that are related to survival knives. Um, which is still probably related enough, but um, it's basically a ticking time bomb because if you if you um, expand the site and cover more uh, more subcategories or topics related to survival, it could quickly become uh, irrelevant or or less relevant, not completely irrelevant because it's still about survival. But uh, yeah, you get the point. Um, so yeah, you. <laughs> You should probably remove uh, all of these uh, sidebars. Um, let's check out one of your articles. Mm, yeah, these uh, previous uh, next post links, you should remove these as well because uh, the, the anchors don't provide any additional context. And again, this just uh, kind of randomly uh, uh, links articles together. Like from this one, you get to your bug outback essentials uh, post. And from this one, you get to, uh, to some masks page, which probably aren't related too much. So get, get rid of this uh, navigation. Same for the, the comments uh, uh, widget here. I would probably just get rid of this. Although this this isn't actually an SEO issue, so if you if you get comments, you can keep it. But I didn't see any comments on any of your pages, so if you don't don't use the comment system, then then don't show this comment widget. Um, what else? Your author link. Okay, so this links to your author archive. And this is actually no index. Okay, so this is fine. Um, but in general, uh, I wouldn't link to no index pages too much. In the case of these category pages that you should no index, uh, Google will, uh, will still crawl and see them anyway. Uh, so don't disallow them in your robots.txt or anything like that just set them to no index and follow like you did with your uh, author archive um but uh, these actually provide additional relevance if done correctly 
and the the author archi archive uh, doesn't this just shows all your posts same same thing as with this blog category so um, i would either remove this link completely or link this to your about page um yeah probably remove it completely i mean it's not really required with a schema you can set the the author details anyway um same for this uh, read more button i would probably just just link the heading and image like you already did and remove the read more button it, it just dilutes um, relevance of your internal anchors uh what else pagination yeah okay this is your author page uh but i've I think I've seen this uh, certainly with your guides category. Yeah, okay, so you've got uh, pagination that's not a huge issue or, or not really avoidable with larger sites, but um, I would still try to, to get rid of, of any pagination. So um, just show all of your posts on this page as as long as it isn't too many it's all right and um if you get rid of these uh generic uh, meaningless categories so to speak like uh, guides reviews and survival which which is basically um what all your content is about then you should uh, end up with uh, with much smaller categories so this would likely uh, take care of this uh, pagination issue uh, anyway. Um, okay, so let's have a look at your schema. Okay, this looks fine. Okay, your site navigation element is kind of broken. This should usually um, show all your menu items, like uh, the, the categories you link to and, and all of that. And this one doesn't show anything. Mm, blog posting is all right. I usually use uh, article schema and, and instead of blog posting. Um, and what you should also do is uh, add a review schema to your to your reviews and roundups. So you get these uh, these review stars on Google and uh, also show you your author name. So it would show review by and your name. And as well as your rating, this uh, does increase click-through rates quite a bit. Um, in some tests, I've noticed that your positions might drop slightly when you when you apply this uh, schema sidewide, but at the same time, your uh, CTR increases enough to <laughs> to still end up with uh, more organic traffic than without these review snippets. So yeah, you should, these, should add these. Uh, other than that, there aren't many, if any, issues with your schema. Um, okay, let's see what else we have. Mm, let's move on to your, um, to your structure, uh, your heading structure, I mean. Mm, for this one, I pick uh, some some keyword with a decent volume. Yeah, let's let's just use this one. And I also open Keywords Explorer and um, just uh, analyze and bug out back without the, the best modifier. 
because this just uh, gives us more more um, long tails to work with. So I'll have a look at having same terms and questions because uh, this generally gives you a good idea how you should uh, structure your subheadings. Um, let me open your page. And let's have a look at your structure. Okay, again, so this is um, this is like the the typical um, subheading structure I see with most affiliate sites. Um, so so what people usually do is um, they. Uh, <laughs> They maybe use some some kind of intro like you do here, um, but then in general they would just uh, list a bunch of product names, uh, copy these from Amazon, and then after after these there's just the conclusion. Um, yeah, so so this this is less than ideal. You did at a FAQ section, which is great. Let's see if you actually answer the uh, questions that pop up here. Yeah, you answer this one. Yeah, these uh, are kind of repetitive. Um, so yeah, your FAQ section actually looks uh, looks good. I would, however, uh, make make these uh, H3, H3 headings so uh, they are part of your uh, subheading structure, um, which I think you didn't do here. Mm. Yeah, other than that, this uh, section looks fine. Um, but the issue with this page is that you don't include any... Um, any long, long tail variations. Um, like, yeah, backpack is definitely included. Um, a tactical bug out back definitely belongs to best bug out back you do include tactical quite a bit in your subheadings which is great um but what i'm uh, <laughs> trying to to look out for here are um, keyword variations that um, that you can use to kind of categorize your subheadings. So um, you could, for example, use an H2 that includes tactical bug out bags. Um, like, I don't know, three best tactical bug out bags. And then in your H threes uh, um, list the the product names like you you did in your H twos here. Mm. And then um, bug out bag kit is probably unrelated as well. What is a bug out bag? That's quite popular. I would probably um, start off with this. So instead of a bug out bag buyer's guide, I would start off with uh, what is a bug out bag. Um, then just uh, explain <laughs> what a bug out bag is and then uh, jump right into the um, these product categories that I'm still trying to come up with. Mm. 
Amazon, you could probably use this like uh, best bug out bags on Amazon. But that's still not what I'm looking for here. Pre made bug out bag. It's probably the same as a bug out bag kit. Uh, family bug out bag. That would uh, probably be another one. Okay, so uh, let me explain what I'm doing here. Um, I'll just use uh, kind of similar, or you could also use the same, so just family instead of families. Um, I just try to, to put these long tails uh, in your subheadings. Um, yeah, to, to increase the relevance of your subheadings in general. So instead of just repeating um, tactical and, and backpack and uh, along with the product names, um, we would basically use uh, different types of uh, bug out bags that people actually search for. Mm, so this would increase the uh, overall relevance of your page in relation to bug out bags. Like here, small bug out bag, this is actually perfect. Um, so you, it doesn't matter too much if you if you um, use this as an actual um, subcategory, so to speak, and then list your products in H3s below that. Um, or if you just uh, squeeze this uh, long tail into your existing H2 headings. So, um, you could use uh, this kind of format, for example, um, just to, to kind of um, increase, yeah, <laughs> increase the relevance of your subheadings. Waterproof bug out bag. This is this is great as well. Basic bug out bag again. That's something you could include. Yeah, just um, that took me quite a bit. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I, I just want to make this as clear as possible because uh, this is something that. Uh, probably the vast majority of, of sites get wrong. Um, you don't always have to, to um, repeat bug out back, but um, what you definitely want to do is, is include um, keyword variations that do have search volume with or without uh, bug out back uh, in them. You could leave this out. So, for example, waterproof shouldn't be in any of these, as far as I can tell. Uh, same for small or families. Um, tactical uh, is in there, actually, which is great. Uh, basic isn't in there, I think. Nope. 
so yeah, these uh, this is something that you should definitely work on. So um, just just look for keywords that contain bug out bag. And what I actually didn't do is um, just look up your your main keyword and then um, check what keywords your main competitors rank for. This one got quite a few keywords, so let's just open up these three. Um, so for example, your waterproof bug out bag is, is something that this page uh, ranks for and you rank for as well. And you mentioned this keyword just uh, twice within your content. So um, if you put this in a subheading, you should should rank, I don't know, top three or, or even two um, in no time. Military, you had this one in your subheadings as well, which is great. So let's see if we can find anything, um, anything you don't rank for that has decent volume. Survival backpack probably. Okay, so you don't uh, rank at all for, for this keyword, but a competing page. Best survival bag. Um, so yeah, these um, these are ranked for, for a survival backpack as a secondary keyword. So um, what I would also try to do is uh, squeeze uh, survival backpack in your subheadings. So basically you have uh, uh, two options to get these keywords to structure your subheadings. Uh, the first one is, is what I just did, why I didn't uh, uh, find too many variations. Um, and the second option is to just uh, look at the keywords your main competitors are ranking for. And uh, yeah, basically just um, just try to include uh, at least the, the keywords that have decent volume um, in your subheadings and uh, try to, to structure them. So reviews or review um, should be included in your subheadings as well. I assume you have this somewhere. Doesn't look like you do. Um, yeah, just in your... Um, in your meta title uh, for sale would probably be something that's that's easy to include in in some subheading like uh, best back out uh, bug out bag comparison table best bug out bags for sale comparison table you could use this uh, or for sale on Amazon, so so you get this this Amazon variation in there that we uh, looked at earlier. Um, then for for specific brands, um, if competing pages rank for uh, for brand keywords as well uh, of, of brands that uh, sell uh, bug out bags. Um, then I would try to, to actually include um, these products uh, in your roundup because again this, this would uh, provide additional relevance you know that people search for for, um, for these uh, specific uh, brands you know that a competing page um, a competing roundup already ranks for um, for these, I think I saw one earlier, but I can't find it now. Anyway, maybe maybe these pages uh, don't rank for for um, any specific um, bug out backpacks. Recommendations again. This is something you could add. Uh, anyway, so um, from here we can um, jump to to internal anchors which uh, where I basically use the same strategy that I use for subheadings. 
So assuming you, you got uh, quite a few long tails and, and keywords that competing pages also rank for uh, in your subheadings and, and structured them, them correctly. Um, then you can actually use these same keywords in your internal anchors. Let's see what we can find in website all the time. Okay, so this one seems to be a contextual link. Um, yeah, this is just an exact match. This is fine. You can use this sometimes. Bug out back, bug out back. That's okay as well, but best bug out back. Get home back. Yeah, just a generic anchor. So again, this is uh, something that I see quite often. So people would just um, basically repeat their, their main keyword, maybe best bug out bag and bug out bags and, and then mix in some, some here, click here or whatever anchors. Um, so what this does or doesn't do um, is that it doesn't give Google any additional context. So you just uh, just keep repeating what what Google already knows. So they already know you want to to rank for best bug out back, and that this is uh, what the page is about. If your content is probably optimized, um, so these internal uh, anchors at least don't uh, provide too much additional value. So what I like to do instead is uh, look at what your own uh, page is ranking for. Uh, that that includes bug out bag or at least is closely related and uh, does have volume. So uh, bug out backpack would be one ex example. You already rank uh, top 10 for this one. It has uh, 1000 searches a month. Um, so what I would do is uh, definitely use uh, this as one of your internal anchors probably instead of uh, uh, all re these repetitive ones. Um, and you can also look at uh, what your competitors rank for. Uh, tactical bug out bag, again, this would uh, give Google a little bit of additional context. A good bug out bag, again, this does have some volume. Um, what else is there? Yeah, the, the waterproof variation. Best bag for bug, bug out. Again, this, this would be a cool variation you could use in your internal anchors. Same one with reviews. Um, and basically, you don't just want to repeat your main keyword over and over, but instead use, use variations, use uh, secondary keywords like, uh, what did we have? survival backpack for example use this in your internal anchors to to provide additional relevance um bug out backpack reviews maybe this one as well large bug out bag basically uh, the same same kind of keywords you are using in your um in your subheadings already or, or are going to use in your subheadings um, or just uh, just different ones that uh, you you didn't put in your subheadings but that competing pages also rank top 10 for i would say so if you see any keywords like i don't know let's jump to page 7 that uh, rank for on on position 20 army bug out back I probably wouldn't use this as internal anchor, but um, but anything that that ranks top ten or, or position one even uh, would would be a perfect um, keyword to use as part of or exactly as your internal anchor.
yeah, there, there's much, much else. Uh, but anyway, you can, you can basically use uh, use all of these or or any of these uh, cheap bug bug out bags. Actually, <laughs> I didn't see this before. Um, this this would again be um, be a perfect uh, variation to use in your subheadings or in your internal anchors. We could just probably squeeze this in in there. So. Um, we now have cover this uh, this cheap uh, bug out bag uh, variation basically and also the basic one so yeah just be creative with your subheadings and uh, whatever you can't use in your subheadings just use this in your internal anchors or in your image alt tags okay i think that's pretty much it and for internal linking i think i mentioned this earlier that you should uh, basically um, interlink uh, on a category basis. So um, interlink more or less everything in, in this bug out bag uh, category. It doesn't matter if it's uh, informational content or if it's money pages, as long as it's uh, closely related and about uh, bug out bags, then just interlink it. Okay, so First of all, we have to add our keywords. I'll use um, a couple of different variations. Because like I mentioned earlier, in uh, many cases, you're going to rank for the, um, for the head terms as well. So just uh, bug out bags depending on the, the competition and whatever Google thinks is uh, the best intent for this, of course. Um, but in general, you should uh, just, um, yeah, just just optimize your pages for these uh, these variations as well, uh, the, the head terms as well. Okay, there we go. And now we can just uh, run a quick analysis. Okay, so uh, this is complete. So let's have a quick look at the competitors and remove uh, Amazon and home pages. Maybe even the New York Times, but actually this seems to be optimized quite well. So I'll leave this in there. Let's remove this one and instead select this one. Okay, and this one as well. This should be all right. Okay, so best bug out back seems to be slightly over optimized. I would probably reduce this to seven occurrences or something. Mm. Survival gear could be increased a little, but we we already uh, are going to use this in our main navigation. So this will uh, actually match the average already. Um, emergency kit, yeah, we could add this a couple of more times. Let's look at single words. So um, best, best is still all right. Um, but uh, back seems to be over optimized. So this could be one reason you, you might not rank for just um, just bug out bag or bug out bags. Um, so uh, I would I would reduce this and try to get this to the yellow area of these bars. Um, yeah, everything else looks fine. You could probably replace uh, um, bag with bags a couple of times because this, this could still be a little higher. Um, let's have a look at the page. Okay, so yeah, best bug out bags and best bug out bag are both variations that are 
kind of over optimized your density is almost twice as high as uh, that of competitors so yeah if you already rank it it could have a negative impact if you if you reduce the density of these keywords um but you you could still um test this and just see what happens so you use this no this is the average this is four times and you use this how many times uh three times as well um but best bug out bag you use is eight times so so twice as often as uh, the average there is actually not not a single result uh, from the ones i selected that mention this more than four times um so uh yeah i i would uh, definitely reduce this a little bit just to i don't know force likely fine but i wouldn't reduce this too much so if you're using it uh, eight times now i would probably reduce this to six or something and and just see what happens if if this makes your your page uh, drop or um, climb up in rankings and always uh, give it some time so in some cases your page would drop after two or three days for a period of i don't know five to seven days and and then like 12 to 16 days later it it would uh, jump up so um don't expect it to to immediately rank better when you change the density of your main keyword in particular because this is obviously something that uh, seos would do and of course google can can tell <laughs> if you if you're playing with the densities especially of your main keyword so yeah just uh, test this a little other than that your uh, on page looks looks quite good so there isn't too much uh, that you should do here high quality again this this doesn't matter if you mentioned this four times or two times it's just irrelevant as long as you mention it so yeah yeah most uh most phrases are covered these uh, single keywords look fine as well i always uh, pay most attention to to every word that is part of your main keyword so best could be reduced slightly but doesn't have to be could actually have a negative impact like i mentioned before survival that's fine bags that could be increased a little bug is perfect and bag should be reduced other than that this uh, this page looks fine which is probably why it ranks well or one of the reasons otherwise it wouldn't but uh yeah like i said if you reduce the uh, exact match density of your um best bug out back keyword a little and just back you should in theory um get this this page to rank a little higher okay i think yeah these are already the most uh, common issues or at least the issues that would have the um, the biggest impact on your site if you take care of them so yeah let's let's see how it goes i'm quite curious um what kind of impact this is going to have on your site because you rank quite well considering you don't have um many backlinks or at least uh none that hrefs could crawl so yeah i think that's it i hope i was able to show you something that you might have missed and that these uh, tools usually don't just show you